Welcome to uh, our discussion of FMQs, Three Men in a Blog. With us today we have Stuart Lockhead, blogger, writer, member of the Twitterati, uh, DJ, broadcaster. Anything I've left out? I can't possibly comment after that. Uh, and Phil Attridge, ex councillor. Phil does lots of good works in the community, Labour Party member for his sins. And myself, Nori Stewart, um, political cartoonist, a bit of blogging, and of course the uh, the podcasting. So what did you think today, Stuart? It was a bit low key compared to some of the first members of questions we've had. They had a week off as well for their skiing holidays. I assume that's why they have a week off in February. What else would you have a week off in February for? Anyway, the low key, um, in fact, it was noticeable how calm Salmon was in, in response at f how many questions did Joanne Lemon get? Four or five. Anyway, for the first few questions, he was very calm and she was getting all worked up. It was only on her last question that he started to raise his voice and uh, get a bit excited. I'm not sure whether what the plan was. I mean, I'm sure they sit down before, you know, imagine Salmon with his advisor before they come down. Yeah. What's the style going to be today? What are you going to respond to? Given well, Phil's, Phil's point that he made earlier about Sam's style is presidential look. Statesmanlike, he says. Sta Statesmanlike, he seems to be. He seems to be getting a bit calmer and, and maybe actually it, the, the darts are getting through. Smarmy, smug, so he's, it does come across bad. I mean, it's always come across to me as just a, they call it smug or smart aleck. Um, supremely confident, because he's invariably proved, uh, when, when you see with the results of the elections, correct, as opposed to right. Yeah. I, I mean, I must admit, I felt he was a little low-key, the nice way to put it. And, um, I do, I enjoy his banter, and that seems to be missing now that the leaderships have changed round. He hasn't found uh, that common ground. Although Ruth Davidson was having a wee laugh to herself when she was getting... She seemed to be enjoying herself. Yeah, she, she she's come on. Out of all the opposition leaders, actually, I'd give her the highest score in the field, going to go out of 10, because she's entertaining. I mean, we've got exactly the same questions, more or less, from Joanne Lamont. Um, and she should lighten up a bit as well. I mean, you can see that with Ruth Davis can get through um, and just lighten up. It's all very, very important and very, very serious. Uh, and Lamont you have to take it that. But it's she kind of, she starts well. Yeah. And it's towards the end of her presentations that she starts to stumble. Joanne Lamont. Yeah, and instead of getting more confident, mm. she seems to lose her confidence as she goes on. Um, and um, as you said, with with her questioning Salmon, Salmon wasn't really on the ball to begin with. No. Although he came back with his tirade of statistics, like he normally as he usually does. does. I think that's probably frustration. Um, you could see, uh, um, you could say he was tired, wasn't on the ball. He could say he was bored because he's already seen the questions which he's answered before. Again. And before and again, um, and how many times does he have to say? Particularly things that do, unless you, you, you read the hot, no, or intimately, about why there are women unemployed, higher unemployed women. And then you went from 27% women and uh, females in the apprenticeship schemes now to 45. Now that's an increase. And I'm always very suspicious of things. Sam is very good with figures. And Joanne's pretty good with figures in throwing how many people have just gone unemployed while I've been talking. Um, but there's lies, damn lies and statistics. Figures don't yeah. lie, but liars figure. You can make figures do what you like at the end of the day. Um, and it says, D Davison, I thought, was, she's positive, she's entertaining, but she did, he did catch her out an absolute beauty and blow her out of the water. Um, and then there's that other one. Do we really have to? I mean, well, why did, is he what there? What did you think of Willie Rennie's job? Um, I was surprised he didn't go about students again because I thought that was yes, it. We, we kind of stuck in a track. Yes. Maybe somebody, yeah, maybe somebody yeah, yeah. To, to, he, turned the disco. Though. Apparently, the issue that he raised had already been raised by uh, just a backbencher. Um, the situation at Ayrshire and Arran Health Board. And uh, as I say, I'm not up to speed on why they were treating it so seriously. One of these, was it, you know what it said, where Phil said 20 people had died? Yeah, there was, there was 20 people died. Under what circumstances? But it wasn't particularly about that, it was about 
But it's an FOI request. Yeah. Yeah. The Freedom of Information request, I presume it was either slow in being answered or wasn't answered. That was the initial problem for everybody. Um, and there's two inquiries now. There's one into why the FOI wasn't responded to quickly and making sure that they're up to speed with their health and safety. Did you notice, responsibility. Did you notice whether Tavish Stock was pulling the strings as usual? You know, he sits right behind Willie Rennie and up to now he always seems to sit there like the puppet master right behind him, pulling it, the strings. It was a kind of funny one. For me, it, it didn't really resonate of, I mean, you're leading one of the opposition parties. I, I would have expected a bigger fish than, than that. I mean, it was on the back of a, a, a question from another they, MSP. I have to say that all parties seem to take the issue very seriously, but, right. I'm, I, but I'm at a loss. I just don't know what it's about. Well, I mean, he tried to tie it to this, the Liberal thing about um, they introduced the legislation for freedom of information and they want it extended in Scotland. Now, Salmond has been criticised. They want, they want to extend it to Quangos, effectively. Yeah, yeah. And Salmon and the SNP have been criticised for not extending it. Okay, and what about, I was surprised actually Salmon didn't come back about, uh, as soon as oh, when the, the Lib Dems start talking about um, FOIs and uh, don't forget the veto by the last week on the cabinet, this is a Westminster veto, mm -hmm. on the cabinet papers, the cabinet papers from 1997-98 about devolution. They've only ever had three vetoes. Uh, two of them were about devolution, and one was about the discussion before they went to war in Iraq. And you can understand why they wouldn't want that public, because criminal charges could follow that. One. It, it's still very much a, a thing that goes right through, didn't the, mention it, sorry. through the British establishment, and no, he might not realise it, but he's got it as well. And Salmon's got it, might be a, a nationalist, but he has that British thing. He, was a privy about, he is a privy uh, councillor. Well, he has that British thing about secrecy. Centralisation. I mean, we are the most secretive, centralised state in the UK, in, in Europe, um, and it goes through to the bones. Um, I wouldn't take any notice about uh, Willie Rennie and the Liberals saying that they, they brought it in. I mean, well, actually, they didn't bring it in. It might have, they might have the bill. It was Tony Blair's government that brought it in. With, Blair, with their support. They've been pushing it through for years. Yeah, but they didn't, they didn't really need the Liberal support. It's all no, but just I mean, done. it has been... It's been a commitment from the Liberals yeah. for a long time. A bit like 16 and 17 year olds get the vote. <laughs> but they, they're, they're, they're very much insignificant, hopefully to be even less significant. I was more interested in, as usual, in looking for the, the sound bites because everybody is looking to get a good mention. Mm -hmm. Joanne Lamont, later sound on. bite, sound bite. Um, Joanne uh, seems to do particularly well. She maybe puts too many in. There's too many. It's well, all sound she bites. She had a list, but the, what, the, the most significant one that struck me today was because someone mentioned it twice and I'm going to look back and see if he's starting using the phrase across these islands instead of United Kingdom or Britain or across the devolved regions this term across these islands so I'll watch out for that in the future well it was used it more than once today yeah but it's very accurate when you consider you've had some people talking about some of the islands you're basically talking about Scotland when you're talking about islands that, well, maybe they don't want to go well, be independent. Well, I was going to say, there are two, and, there and are two aspects of that. One is one is, is an issue that I'm very, very keen on, that um, Greece is a country, and you would never consider dismissing all the islands. Thousands and yet miles. Scotland, too, is a country of islands. Yes. And how many times do you find Shetland and Orkney on a map stuck down in the middle of the Murray Firth? Or... The islands all but ignored when it comes to say resources, all the sea areas. <laughs> Do they think someone's worried Shetland will be wanting a referendum on independence? But on the other side, of course, is by talking about across these islands, he's including the yeah. Irish Republic. Yeah. And if you're going strong on the strength of the social union, which I personally was involved in a small Twitter, um, a Twitter <coughs> chat last night with David Torrance. Um, you know, there is a social union across these islands, which includes the Irish in the south. Yeah, yeah. You, if you're in London, if you spend any time in the south of England, to the English, to the southern English, an Irishman and a Scotsman or a Welshman, we're all just 
The same. The same. Yeah. Celts, I think, is the word. But then they uh, don't call Celtic. us Celtic. No, they don't. No, they call us jocks, paddies, and taffs. Yeah. Um, well, that's what the colonial master usually does. But the point is, they don't yeah. down there. They don't differentiate. They just no. regard us all part of the same social union. And uh, there is a so not that's a big item. Can I come back to the? Can we run through the? Yeah, the, let's the do the other sound bites. Let's well, let's run let's run through the questions and pick out the sound the sound bites as okay. we go. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Joanne Lamont on jobs again. Um, she had two bites of that cherry before Salmon started throwing uh, the stats at her um, and came down quite hard on the, the number of women who were losing their jobs. It's apparently gone from 200 jobs every day to 399 women losing their jobs every day and accusing Salmon of a broken promise. But it's that losing their jobs, now when they do this, if, if, if things have been outsourced, if it's been changed, are they losing their jobs and walking into another job? Because he's talking about, about the employment. Again, it's, it's well, figures. This, this is based on the figures that have come out. So you see, the problem is, I don't think that it, that going down that road is a strong argument for John Lamont. Until you've prepared the ground, until you've prepared the, the public generally to believe that it's a terrible thing, the jobs are going, you know what I mean, until the, the, you need weeks of telling the public that jobs are be, being lost at a terrible rate, that women are going unemployed, there has to be a, a background before that you can have, make an impact in something like FMQs. Well, yeah. do, do you not actually think that the point has now come that everybody has to accept that the only thing on the table, the day-to-day -day running of this country is basically driven by money from Westminster. So to a larger extent, the government, the Scottish government's hands are tied on what they can do. Therefore, the argument then becomes, what could you do with more devolution, tax, tax raising powers giving you the levers, the choices of where to put the money, or independence? And they're banging on, almost digging their own hole here, because Salmond every time gets the opportunity to turn around and say, well, sorry, that's Westminster's responsibility. That's Westminster's responsibility. Oh, and by the way, it was Alistair Darling's idea in the first place. So how does Labour deal with that? How does Labour actually make some of the mud stick? Just you, by continually you repeating continue, it? They keep throwing it at the wall. Well, they, can, yeah, well, they continue, and, and it's thrown in sound bites. There's, not much to substance, just throw, you know, it's like throwing darts and then they, you know, um, get a whole big story together. I mean, blow them out of the water, you but, know. But Sam is coming back with exactly the same things. And, you know, Labour voted against a budget with 25,000 apprenticeships. They voted they against the capital. Capital. Capital spend. spend. And capital is where you'll get five jobs. point plan involves four things that the yeah. Scottish Government can't make decisions on. The Labour five point plan, yeah. And, uh, Every time it comes up, this gets thrown back at them. They need to find something else. I, th I agree with you. Can I, can I come in with, with a Twitter? Yeah. Does anyone know what it is specifically that Joanne Lamont is asking the First Minister to do in order to boost employment? She isn't asking him anything well, else. She's uh, asking him to adopt the, five, the Labour five point plan. Oh. Four of which elements the powers that he, 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 doesn't he, have. he ha hasn't got the leverage to, to deal with. And another one here, why no comment from Joanne Lamont and all those Labour councillors in her constituency losing their jobs? Oh, that's just, a, that's the little bit of a, well, Labour always enjoys that. I mean, there's nothing better yes, than... Yes, but surely the constituency MP is always no. bringing up job losses in their constituency. <laughs> Has she found them other jobs with the Tory party, for instance? Oh, well, they say they're getting rid of the dead wood there through in the West, um, but a lot of that dead wood doesn't really think it's dead. And at the moment, they're battling with the commission, with the electoral commission, about what they can call themselves. Um, and if you will notice, they were going to call themselves Glasgow Labour. Labour. But while they were talking it, Labour itself dived in yeah. and grabbed it, which they're entitled to do. So it's a well, why spend? You know, it, it was a close. It was a, it was a very close thing because apparently Glasgow Labour have already re registered. Prior to that, nineteen of the yeah. maximum twenty names that are allowed to register for themselves before an election. They only had one choice left. I don't know how it would have worked if they'd run out if they'd used all twenty. What What did you think of 
And I don't have the stats on this. The, the Welsh Labour have cut unemployment? Well, see, again, it is a bit, and the word we're looking for is arcane. I mean, we are, we are politically, we're not naive politically, and yet we're sat here going, okay, who on earth is going to be impressed by all this de detailed discussion yeah. about jobs? You need to present the argu argument in the tabloids, on the television news, so that there is a general feeling about, oh, three million unemployed, oh, you um, know, and then you can make an impact. At the moment, it, it's, I guess I say, it's arcane. Did you say the tabloids, you talked about the red tops, um, how do you do that in pictures? Well, you, Labour's got that problem because the red tops no longer belong to Labour. No, well, apart from that, they, no. there's, there's absolutely no way they would... That I mean, even the Daily Record it. is moving yeah. towards so here. A, a tactical support for independence. So, and, and if Rupert Murdoch is to be believed by Rummy's Twitter, the Sun is going to support independence, so... Labour is... That's a poison of chalice, yeah. of course. Labour is yeah. the author of yeah. Trump and uh, yeah. Murdoch yeah. backing you. Mm -hmm. um, so, oh. best soundbite from Joanne Lamont. Hmm, I did. Bro um, broken promise? No, I didn't really. Know. No. Uh, what did she. She broke. Oh, yes, he, he broke. Apparently, Simon broke the Trades Description Act. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there was that bit about his pals. He would be done under the Trades yeah. Description Act. And, she, and she did bring up Trump and Murder. Yeah, he, Trump and Murder. That, that, that was quite good, yeah. But again, it's this. It, again, it's all negative campaigning. It's all People. negative campaigning. Why is Alex Salmond in there with a majority that was not supposed to happen? Was it because at the last election, Labour spent its whole time negative, negative, negative? Now Ruth Davidson comes across as it's about presentation. When she's having a go, she can do it in a positive manner. Um, Labour and Tories are um, well quite aligned on some things, or they appear to be anyway, particularly about what. The, Cuts and that in Westminster, and you know, and Alice Darling and cuts. So take a few lessons off the. Well, look at Ruth Davidson. Good performance today. Yeah, I thought she was good, even when she even when he for was good. Oh yeah. Was, you know. Now we haven't even mentioned the issue she she raised. Ruth. Yet. Yeah. No, no, the uh, sixth richest nation in the OECD. It's been. What's no? What's been noticeable? The SMB have banging, been banging on about that for quite a few weeks now. It's the way they express it. They don't say it's the sixth nation, richest nation in the world. The sixth richest nation in the OECD. Now I'm not sure that presumably excludes some countries that are richer. Otherwise, they wouldn't. But all the SNP heavyweights are being very specific in the way they've expressed that figure. Anyway, Ruth Davidson was challenging the figure, whatever figure that um, the SNP were coming up with. And, she claimed that it wasn't supported, it wasn't official figures. And I'm not quite sure who, who came out best in that argument. I think, I think Salmon, because, Salmon yeah. because he got the opportunity to say, right, okay, these are government figures, but we've included Scotland's income from um, the oil that would be in our national area. It's quite interesting I would like to know if they include that big chunk that Blair gave away. Well, that was that didn't quite get mentioned, but well, mentioned, the they mentioned a bigger. No, no, but it, 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 they mentioned a bigger thing that the entire offshore continental shelf was removed from Scottish jurisdiction and, di and was directly under the control of, of London. Became another country. Was Became another country, country That's as half they described century, it, yeah, though, isn't it? Yeah. And. Um, <sighs> I was sat there thinking, oh, he, oh he, also, he also managed to bring in a Macron report. Yeah. Now that, of course, is a big SNP hogwash at the moment. Because um, there, are, there are people trying to make it trend on Twitter every day, which is, um, well, the Macron report was a report that was withheld for 30 odd years, buried, which said in 1979 that um, Scotland would have been one of the richest countries in the world and could easily afford to be independent based on the oil, which of course the current, that the government at the time denied and ever, every Westminster government since told lies about it, but um, we now know it. I think it's this term richest country because you can name numerous countries that are far wealthier than Scotland could ever hope to be um, as a nation, but I think the way, you know, it's, it's wealthy as um, based on your population and, and, and your uh, 
basic average income to what would be out your GD with your gross domestic product yeah. Yeah. times your population. And if you look at Norway, which is fifty seven percent richer apparently. Um, and it has less oil than the British Isles or was Scotland. A, there was a sense like an article in, in the Scotsman today saying that um, can't remember who, who it was written by. Saying that salmon's oil fund and all the rest of it is what was it he expected thirteen billion after ten years, something like that. Oh well, that's to be put that's, away. That, that's by a, a very dubious think tank. Okay. Which so an two, independent think tank. It's not which, an independent which think tank. Which immediately makes me think it isn't. Both the senior people that write that wrote that report used to be Labour Party researchers. So I don't would not an it. independent think tank. John McLaren, he's never off the uh, telly. And the other one is Professor I think it's Tom Harrison or Ron Harrison. It could be slightly wrong. He there's a sound bite here that we haven't got quite got to, but um um, Ruth, in reference to Ruth Davis and Alex Salmon said, uh, talking that he, you know, talking about exactly what is her position, following her line in the sand about <laughs> yes, extra okay. powers to Scotland. Um, she apparently can agree with Murdo Fraser, but at the moment, anyway, will she now follow Murdo Fraser or Lord Forsyth, who she phones up? Uh, because Murdo Fraser and uh, Lord Forsyth have got totally different views yes. on on extra powers. Um, or Lord Forsyth, who she phones up. I, th I did think Salmon came out well on top in the end of that one. Although Ruth Davidson still looks a much better operator 